This lecture will focus on how twins develop as well as the process of parturition or giving birth. It is now more common to see multiple births because recent technology have made fertilization therapy successful. However, the risk of chromosomal anomalies and fetal morbidity and mortality are higher in multiple gestations as compared to single gestation. That's the reason why it's important to study about multiple births. Our lecture will focus on twinnings and not other forms of multiple births. There are actually two types of twinnings. You have monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins. Dizygotic twins, otherwise known as fraternal twins, are formed when there are two ova that are fertilized by two sperms, resulting to the formation of two zygotes. In figure A, the two zygotes implanted with a little bit more distance from each other, and this will result to the formation of a separate placenta and chorion. There are, however, cases in figure B, for example, whereby the two zygotes implanted very close to each other, and this resulted to the fusion of the placenta, fusion of the chorion. Because dizygotic or fraternal twins result from the fertilization of two oocytes, it means that the twins developed from the two zygotes may have the same sex or they may be of different sexes. It is for the same reason that they are no more alike genetically than brothers or sisters that are born at different times. It just so happens that they are born at a similar time. The only thing that they do have in common is that they were in their mother's uterus at the same time and so they are considered twins. The dizygotic twins would always have two amnions and two chorions, but the chorions and the placenta may fuse especially if the zygotes implant very close to each other. Now this figure shows how a dizygotic twins develop from two zygotes and it also shows the relationships of the fetal membranes and the placenta. For example, in figure A, notice that the blastocyst will implant separately, while in figure B, the blastocysts implant very close to each other. Now, in both cases, there are two amnions and two chorions. However, in the case of figure B, the placenta are usually fused because they implant very close together. Monozygotic twins or identical twins arise from one oocyte that is fertilized by one sperm resulting to the development of one zygote. However, this zygote in early stages of development eventually splits to form another zygote. And in the case of figure A, the splitting happens at very early stage of development so that the two zygotes form ends up having their own amniotic cavity, own chorion, and also their own placenta. In figure B, the splitting of the zygote to form two zygotes occur a little bit much later so that they end up having a common chorionic cavity but separate amniotic cavity. They also have the same placenta. A little bit rare would be what happened in figure C whereby the zygote form split a little bit much later stage in development and as a consequence of which the embryo ended up having a common placenta, a common amniotic cavity, take note of that, and also a common chorionic cavity. Now in the case of figure C, because they have a common amniotic cavity, chances that the umbilical cord will twist around the other twin or even itself is higher and so 
This is actually a very um, critical sort of pregnancy that would require close super, well, close, not supervision, but close monitoring would be the correct word. This diagram shows how some of the monozygotic twins develop. This shows how late division of early embryonic cells such as the division of the embryonic disc during the second week will result to monozygotic twins that have one amniotic sac and one chorion. So we call this monochorionic or, and monoamniotic twin. And this is rare and also is associated with around 50% fetal mortality. These monozygotic twins are rarely delivered alive because, as mentioned earlier, the umbilical cords are frequently so entangled so that the circulation of blood through their blood vessels will, will be disrupted and one or both of the fetuses would die. And that's the reason why sonography is very important in the diagnosis as well as management of twin pregnancies. Now, this diagram further shows to you the different types. One would be in figure A, you have their separate twin having a single amnion, single placenta, and single chorion. In figure B, if the embryonic disc failed to separate completely, it forms an embryo and eventually a fetus that is joined to each other and we call this a conjoined twin. Conjoined twins have, again, a single placenta, a single chorionic sac, and also a single amniotic sac. In figure C, you will see how there is also incomplete division of the disc resulting in a conjoined twin whereby one of the conjoined twin appears larger than the other. Sometimes, the smaller twin is not even complete. In other words, it could be consists only of a head and limbs and not the entire body of the fetus. Even though monozygotic twins arise from the same embryoblasts and therefore they have the same genetic information, they may still be discordant. And the reason for the discordance could be a lot of factors. One factor would be environmental differences and chance variations. For example, the abnormalities in the development of blood vessels whereby one twin would receive more nourishment than the other would result to the discordance. And there are also what you call as post-zygotic changes. For example, there could be somatic mutations that could lead to discordance for, say, cancer or somatic rearrangement of immunoglobulin or the T-cell receptor genes. All of these are possible so that there could still be differences even amongst monozygotic twins or identical twins. So in this figure, you see an ultrasound image of a discordant twin at 24 weeks of gestation. This is a case of twin-twin transfusion syndrome. It means that there is unequal distribution of nutrition to the twin so that one would receive more than the other. And in such case, you will notice in figure B that the one of the twin is actually larger as con to compared to the smaller twin. This is your twin transfusion syndrome. If the embryonic disc do not divide completely or the adjacent embryonic disc will fuse, it will result to various forms of conjoined monozygotic twins. In this photograph, you see a newborn monozygotic conjoined twin showing union in the thoracic region, and so that's called thoracopagus. It has been estimated that the incidence of conjoined twins is somewhere one for every 50,000 to 100 births. In some cases, the twins are joined only by their skin, and so it's much easier to separate the two. 
However, there are cases when the twins would share a lot more organs together, say liver or maybe stomach or maybe even a heart. In such cases, successful separation of the twins would not really be sustained viably for both of the twin without sacrificing the other. The photograph that you see here is a picture of the twins four years after they were successfully separated from each other. This is an interesting photo showing parasitic twins. Parasitic twins meaning one of the twin is larger as compared to the other and the smaller twin usually do not have complete body parts so it's called parasitic. And another interesting figure showing dicephalic or two-headed conjoined twins. And here it shows the bones in red and the cartilages in blue. Note that two clavicles would support the middle arm and there is also few thoracic cage and parallel vertebral columns. So they actually share a lot of structures together. So these are photographs of triplets with their placenta and their corresponding fetal membranes. And nowadays we could understand better what has happened in the course of embryonic development by examining the different fetal membranes and the placenta. And it actually revealed that the two fetuses associated with the membranes on the left were actually identical and the one on the right is a singleton. So figure B shows the diamniotic monochromatic placenta is on the left and the single placenta is on the right side. And so these three fetuses actually develop from two different zygotes. Parturition is the process of giving birth and it's divided into different stages of labor. This figure shows the drawings of the median section of a woman's body. Figure A, the woman is not pregnant. Figure B, 20 weeks pregnant. And figure C, 30 weeks pregnant. Now take a look in figure A. Note the position of the uterus relative to that of the urinary bladder as well as that of the intestine. Now this time take a look at the woman in figure B. 20 weeks of pregnancy. Notice that the uterus and the fetus now reach the level of the umbilicus. And by 30 weeks, it now reaches the epigastric region. And it is for this reason that the mother's abdominal viscera are actually displaced and compressed. And so the woman would have the tendency of feeling heartburn, for example, especially during later stages of pregnancy. And frequent urination is because the weight of the fetus is pressing against the urinary bladder. Now take a look at how the fetus as it grows actually compresses against the large intestine, particularly the rectum. And for this reason alone, it can explain why constipation may also be a problem for pregnant women in later stages of pregnancy. The stages of labor are divided into four stages. First would be dilation, second is expulsion, then placental stage, and fourth is recovery. Dilation is when there is regular painful contractions of the uterus, and this occurs less than 10 minutes apart. And this ends up with a complete dilation of the cervix. We see that the cervix is completely dilated if it has already reached 10 cm's. In the case of expulsion, which is actually shown in figures C and figure D and E, you will see that there is already a fully deleted cervix and it ends with the delivery of the baby. 
Placental stage begins as soon as the baby is formed and it ends when the placenta and the different fetal membranes are already expelled. And that is shown in figure F. Recovery is what happens when the myometrial contractions would constrict the spiral arteries that supply blood to the intervillous spaces, and this is actually very important to prevent excessive uterine bleeding. So this shows to you the second stage, which is the expulsion stage, whereby in figure A, you, you can see the crown of the head um, that distends the mother's perineum. And in figure B, notice that the head had already enfeased already slipped through the perineum and in figure C the head is delivered and is completely out and we are just waiting now for the body of the fetus to be expelled. So this is a photograph of the placenta and fetal membranes after birth. And this figure shows some of the possible placental abnormalities. For example, we have placenta accreta. There is abnormal adherence of the placenta to the myometrium. And you have their placenta percreta, whereby the placenta has penetrated the full thickness of the myometrium. And take note, this is very, very critical in a sense that if the placenta is delivered, say, and this was not detected and a, my, a midwife does this, if the midwife were to pull the placenta, she would be pulling along with it a large chunk of the myometrium. And this is the reason why some women actually die from, from giving birth because of severe bleeding. And Placenta previa, the placenta overlies the internal os of the uterus and it blocks the cervical canal. And again, this can cause bleeding such that when the fetus grows, it presses against the placenta and it may result to severe hemorrhagic bleeding. To summarize, today we learned that there are actually two types of twins, monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins. Of the two, the most common type of twins is the dizygotic twins, and usually they would have two amnions, two chorions, and two placentas. There are cases, however, if they are implanted very close to each other, they could end up with fused placentas and even fused chorions. Monozygotic twins, which is the less common type of twin, will are derived from one zygote that eventually split into two. And so the twins would commonly have one chorion, two amnions, and sometimes one placenta. Twins with one amnion, one chorion, and one placenta are always monozygotic. However, their umbilical cords are often entangled that's the reason why they are usually not viable. Another thing we talked about today would be about parturition or the, different, or the different stages of labor. And I guess that's it for today. So always remember, life is beautiful.